comes to you from the country roads of Morgantown, West Virginia. You're watching the Big 12 on ESPN, and tonight it's the number 17 West Virginia Mountaineers hosting the Oklahoma State Cowboys. From inside WVU Coliseum alongside Chris Patola, I'm Rich Hollenberg. Chris, we are now two-thirds of the way through the conference schedule, and the Mountaineers have hit a bump in the road, losers up their last three. And their offense has really struggled. They had to make a change, and they did to the starting lineup. Two guys out, Derek Culver and Jordan McCabe. Two new guys in, Miles McBride and Taz Sherman. So they've gone smaller, playing only the one big, and they've added shooting with Taz Sherman, hoping he can give their perimeter a little bit of a lift. It's the first career starts for both McBride and Sherman. And this is a West Virginia team that has struggled, as we mentioned, losers of their last three. And they've only shot it at a 33% clip from two-point range in those three losses. Still, they come in with an overall even record in the Big 12 at six and six. Oklahoma State has started to turn things around a little bit. They've been a little bit of a cowboy comeback in Stillwater. They've won three of their last four after starting Big 12 play 0-8 in the conference slate. Here's the series history between the two, knotted up at eight apiece, but of note, that middle note, Oklahoma State has won the last three meetings here in Morgantown. That means the three main seniors on this Oklahoma State team, Cam McGriff, Thomas DeZagua, and Lindy Waters could end their Cowboy careers undefeated at WVU Coliseum. Not many opposing players could say that. It's a pretty crazy stat of all the stats, it really is. I mean, I know West Virginia struggled last year, but this program's good. They're always very good at home. It's pretty remarkable you could end your career being undefeated in Morgantown. Your officials tonight, James Breeding, Roger Ayers, Chris Rastatter. It's going to be Oscar Shibwe, the preseason Big 12 player of the year, jumping center in the white uniforms for West Virginia, in the black uniforms with orange trim. It's the Oklahoma State Cowboys. We are set to go from inside WVU Coliseum, and the Cowboys control the opening tip. There's McBride, number four in white, starting on Ice Likely. Ten on the shot clock. Waters thought about the three, stepped inside the line, and knocked down the first two of the game. And that's something they made a decided effort to focus on is two-pointers instead of threes, Chris. Well, and, and he's a three-point shooter, but hasn't shot it well. I like the decision early in the game to get himself a closer look. Here's Tash Sherman coming off 20 points against Baylor. Inside to Haley, and we're tied at two. You know, West Virginia going small, so you take Derek Culver out of the lineup, you're not playing two 6'10 guys, but they still have good size with Haley and Emmett Matthews still in there, both 6'7. Haley gives it up to Matthews, and that's a good sign for Emmett Matthews seeing the ball go in the bucket. He's two for his last 14 in his last three games before that one. of these teams do not shoot the three ball particularly well. We are expecting a lot of balls going into the painted area tonight, which is a rarity in college basketball. And A kicks it out, two on the shot clock. McGriff fires it and hits with the shot clock running down. Well, because of the pressure, West Virginia is going to make everything difficult. They're going to pressure the ball, deny one pass away. At times, you're going to have to make tough shots. That was a brutally tough shot made right there by Cam McGriff. And you know what? He would have it no other way. Talked to him today at shoot around. He said, playing against West Virginia is my kind of game. Here comes Jonathan Laurent. Has it picked off by Sherman. West Virginia has numbers. Here's McBride. Off the mark. Offensive rebound. Shibwe got the foul, but not the bucket. And Oscar Shibwe will go to the line and shoot, too. Oklahoma State, well, head coach for Oklahoma State, Mike Boynton in his third season. And as we mentioned, three trips to West Virginia and three wins as a head coach. And they've really turned it around. And listen, you give him a lot of credit because they were a three-point shooting team at the start of the season. They were 7-0. and Then all of a sudden they went into a major rut when Isaac Likely went out with an illness, their point guard. 
and he decided just about a month ago we're going to go more inside than we are outside and that's been the big bit difference for them. I asked him today what's the what's the key tonight he said rebounding I mean West Virginia the Big 12's best rebounding team they average 15 offensive rebounds a game and that guy right there who just knocked that free throw in Oscar Shibwe is one of the five best offensive rebounders in the country nine double doubles for Shibwe in his freshman campaign at times he's been spectacular here's your A. two feet in the paint gets it to go it's playing out exactly like we thought at least on Oklahoma State's end of things and he's very left hand dominant so when he can put it on the floor with that left hand nice little touch on the jump hook Matthews oh and the throw down from Emmett Matthews Eight six West Virginia all 14 points scored either on two-point field goals or free throws. Ane tries again and hits again. Your Ane is an early two for two. And both scores starting at that little elbow mid-post area. First possession, puts it on the floor, gets a jump hook, and then there, knocks down a wide open 15-foot shot. Knocked away by Likely in the hands of Shibwe, but Shibwe gets fouled. This was beautiful, and you didn't see a full shot fake. He just shows him the eyes. And Jonathan Laurent budges. There it is, a little hesitation, boom. And then you get a lane to the basket, the lefty going to his right hand. And if you're Jonathan Laurent, Emmett Matthews hasn't shot it well enough for you to come out of your stance. But just to show the eyes, got Laurent to lift. And here's the first sign of the 2-3 zone from Oklahoma State. They've played about 60-40 man to zone this year. Three-pointer by Sherman off the mark. Both offenses have been crisp in the opening minutes. Here's an A, mid post, working on Haley. Why not? He's three for three now, your A. After going 0 for three in just 14 minutes of action in their win last time out against Texas Tech. And they're throwing it to him. They're being aggressive, going right after him. And he's in attack mode. Picked off by McGriff. It's a two on one for the Pokes. And a lob just out of the reach of Cam McGriff, thrown by Likely. It'll be West Virginia basketball when we return. Oklahoma State with a 10-8 lead in the early going here on the road against 17th ranked West Virginia. And from inside West Virginia, Coliseum alongside Chris Patola. I'm Rich Hollenberg. What's been the reason for the success of late in Stillwater? They've won three of their last four. Well, you, you said it at the top. They're, they're making an emphasis of driving the basketball and getting it to the paint. They're not a good three-point shooting team. So that's a start. The other thing is some of these other new faces, some of these new faces they have, uh, Jonathan Laurent, who's a grad transfer from UMass, he's finally getting comfortable in that lineup. Some of these freshmen, Caleb Boone, starting to give them better minutes. So there were some new faces they added. Uh, I think a change in scheme has been good. Uh, and they've been aggressive to start this game, attacking a West Virginia team that defensively has been vulnerable in the paint and at the basket. Oklahoma State. Early going, five for six from the field, Chris, and all six of those field goal attempts have come inside the arc. And Oklahoma State stays in the 2-3 zone. Seven on the shot clock. McBride is going to have to force it up. And it's off the mark. Offensive rebound to Shibwe. Fresh 20 for the Mountaineers. It looks like the West Virginia offense is a little stifled from this zone. Well, it stood him up, and the ball's not really moving. Sherman off the mark on his three. West Virginia 0 for 4 from beyond the arc. Another lob. Again, trying to get it to McGriff, and again, maybe a poor decision by Ice Lake. No, maybe. That's, that's two bad passes, and I, you know, fool me once. I'm not going to get fooled again. 
to do it twice is just not a good decision. Senior Thomas DeZagua on the floor, number four in black for Mike Horton's Cowboys. He's a three-point specialist, so you know he's not stepping inside the three-point arc, but he might be the only one. Waters off the mark on his three attempt. Ball's got to get inside this zone somehow. You flash somebody to the foul line. You do it with penetration. McBride gets it inside to Shibwe, and he's blocked by McGriff. Now likely downhill, and he missed the bunny from close range. Ride lined it up, can't hit, foul on the floor, and a stoppage of play at 13-25. Well, over on ESPN at 9 Eastern, Coach Cal and the number 10 Wildcats squaring off against LSU at the Maravich Center in Baton Rouge. The Wildcats have won six of the last eight against the Tigers, but LSU won a thriller the last time they went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, winning by two about a year ago. And of course, earlier today I was checking out some ESPN Classic and they had the 94 game between those two teams. Remember that? When Rick Pitino's club came from 31 yeah, down to beat it. LSU. Yes. Unbelievable. Kentucky now in sole possession of first place in the SEC after the weekend. And I think Nick Richards right now is the SEC's player of the year. Chase Harler all alone. Can't get it to go. They're still 0-4-3 in the game. Well, you, you got some penetration against the zone to Shibwe, a play he's got to finish on the last possession. But right now, it's like a tennis match. I mean, the ball's going back and forth, east, west. You, you're not, nobody's driving the zone. You're not penetrating with a pass to that foul line area. West Virginia scoreless in their last four plus minutes. And Bob Huggins, who is anything but shy about sharing his opinions with us before a game, said we just don't know how to score right now. They've had good opportunities, even at close range, haven't been able to convert. Coach Huggins, the future Hall of Famer, sitting on 878 career victories. A win tonight ties him all time with Dean Smith at 879. Mm. That one's pinned by an A. Saved by Waters into the hands of Derek Culver. And he turns it over to DeZago. Waters drives. Both offenses after hot starts have cooled off considerably. Uh, and here's the problem. Neither of these teams are good passing teams. They're both dead last in the Big 12 in assists. And that's part of the problem. It's decision making. It's timing. It's... You know, when a team's struggling offensively, it's not always just because they can't make shots or they don't have shot makers. A lot of times, it's who's setting up those shots. At the line for Oklahoma State, Isaac Likely, two shots. So here's Isaac Likely. They call him Ice. He was forced into eight turnovers against this West Virginia team the last time they played in Stillwater. And we mentioned Bob Huggins. One win shy of tying Dean Smith for sixth all-time. He already passed eight off Rupp earlier this year, and he's three wins shy of matching Roy Williams, who's just ahead of Dean Smith. He's left off the finalist list for the Hall of Fame yet again this year, but it's just a matter of time before Huggy Bear gets his name called for the Basketball Hall of Fame. And it, it, it's too late. Like it, I agree, it's going to happen, but it's, it's like years too late. I mean, I've been banging the drum for, I mean, we're talking eight, nine years now that he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. There's no question about it. Now Jordan McCabe, number five, who started every game this season until this one, is back on the floor. McCabe inside, Culver. Spin, lost it out of bounds. It's going to stay West Virginia basketball with 11.45 on the clock and the Mountaineers down two.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. And in part by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. And Tostitos, get to the good stuff. That man in bronze, he had a lot of good stuff. Hot Rod Hunley, Jerry West, the two statues outside WVU Coliseum. Both have their names and numbers up in the rafters here. And they'll be joined by Rob Thorne on February 29th. There's a make, finally, another two-pointer, this one by Sean McNeil. Oh, and Derek Bulver, just a bad decision there. Like, I understand you want to contest, but you're an A catching it 18 feet from the basket. You got to be able to live with that instead of giving up a dunk. You know, it's interesting, Oklahoma State now back in man-to-man, -man, so changing up the defenses. You know, here, here, the contest, it, it, you know, I'm okay with Urine catching it 18 feet from the basket. Derek Culver trying to contest, take that away, almost has it. The problem is no help behind, and you give up a dunk. What a start for Urine. Eight points for Urine. He leads all scores, four for five from the field. Here's DeZago, guarded by McNeil. Extending that man defense. Five on the shot clock. McGriff pulls up and hits. The He's senior at a Grand Prairie Maduro. has four. He's become so good at using his body to create space. He just gives that kind of that little shimmy to shed the defender to create the space he needs to get it off. I mentioned he has never lost in this building, averaging 14 and 7 against the Mountaineers in Morgantown. Culver's got his first two. There's a three by McGriff. He's feeling it early. Just the 19th triple on the year for Cam McGriff. Extends Oklahoma State's lead to five under 10 minutes to go in the first half. Well, our NBA Friday night doubleheader starts in OKC when Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets taking on Chris Paul and the Thunder at 8 Eastern. Then Zion and the Pelicans are in the Rose City for a battle with the Blazers. We'll have to see if Damian Lillard can return to action. Our coverage starts with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern on ESPN. McNeil, and we're going the other way, stepped on the sideline. We've earned our Zion Pelicans games, all those games we had to suffer through <laughs> that were on the air without him. Brandon Ingram's on line one for you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Turnovers are four to four, each team. Avery Anderson, backup point guard, zero and black on now for Mike Boynton. And here's Caleb Boone, nice big to big passing. And an easy two for Cam McGriff with the flush. So McGriff has nine, Ane has eight. That's 17 of the Oklahoma State 19 points. And it's a heads up pass by Boone, but that was bad defense. Uh, there, you know, you're running to double a freshman on the block whose percentage scoring there is gonna be really low. You run a double, it seems arbitrary, and you just give up a dunk. There's no help behind because I think the weak side defense didn't realize there was going to be a double. Uh, just a bad defensive possession there by, by West Virginia. And you see Cabo Saboyan taking a quick seat on the bench and getting an earful from assistant head coach Larry Harrison. It's a seven-point Cowboys lead, their largest of the game. Remember, when these two teams met on January 6th, West Virginia held Oklahoma State to 41 points. 
It was a 55-41 win for the Mountaineers, the lowest scoring combined total in the Big 12 this season. And I'm hard pressed to tell you the last quality shot that West Virginia's had. And a bad pass by Matthews. Zagwa catch and release. Out of bounds, and Roger Ayers says it's going to be West Virginia basketball. So this is a question I've been wondering basically all season long in the Big 12. How much of it, if you had a scale, is good defense versus bad offense? Well, I think well, let's start with the three-point shooting because the numbers are way down. And I think a lot of that has to do with the defense. You know, I'd probably say 70, 40, 70, 30. Is that the number, 30? Yeah, that's good. Does that yeah. make 100? 70, 30 makes 100. I think these teams are so well coached in school to defend the three-point line. But look, it's, it's a down year across the board. It's not just the Big 12. Offense is bad this year for the majority of college basketball teams. That's going to be a shot clock Those violation by the Mountaineers. Another quick timeout, under eight minutes to go. Oklahoma State up seven. The combined Aztecs and Rest. Coming up on ESPN, Kentucky and LSU, a sonic blockbuster. Here in West Virginia, Super Tuesday presented by Progressive. It's Oklahoma State on the road looking to make it four of their last five. They have a seven-point lead with 7.52 to go in the first half. And at the top of this telecast, Chris Patola, we talked about Bob Huggins shuffling that starting lineup. Sherman and McBride come in. They're combined 0 for 7 as first-time starters. Yeah. I also think it's important to note that if those guys were that good or were, they would have been starting from day one. You know, you've pulled two guys who have been off coming off your bench all year. That's a new starting a game is a lot different than starting the game on the bench. So we'll see how it develops. And this has been an, an offense that has struggled. I mean, certainly over the last three games. Three on the shot clock. One left. Got it off in time and nailed it. Thomas DeZagua, fifth all time at Oklahoma State in three pointers made. And he's got his first tonight. Second three-pointer of the night for the Oklahoma State Cowboys, and it looks like the officiating crew is checking it out to see if he indeed got the release off in time. He did. Quick release from Thomas Zagua, the senior from Temple Terrace, Florida. You know, it's important to also add you know, West Virginia's offense has struggled. Their defense is also struggling. And, and I think it's in part, you know, players get some juice. They get some life from making shots on the offensive end. But West Virginia struggled to guard at the, in, in, in the paint all year. Good look there from Emma Matthews. They've struggled to guard in the paint all year. Teams are shooting 44% from two-point range against them. They've turned it, you know, it's in part their defense. Likely took it all the way to the rim and got fouled. And Bob Huggins is upset to say the least. That's the first foul on Oscar Shibwe. And it's plays like that where you're, you're picking up full court. And Isaac Lightly does a nice job just dribbling through the, the pressure and getting himself to the basket. If you go back to that game, West Virginia game against Baylor, over the weekend. I mean, they gave up 42 points in a paint. They had 21 turnovers. That's going to stress your defense. And I, I think it's put so much stress on their defense that it's been affected over the last three games. Yeah, they had more turnovers in that game than they did field goals made. That's not a recipe for success. Likely hits them both, extends the lead to 10. Oklahoma State 24-14 over 17th ranked West Virginia. Joe Lenardi has them as a three seed in the NCAA tournament, but they are on the struggle bus right now, looking to avoid their fourth straight loss in Big 12 play. McBride has his first bucket, and that's a welcome sight. Deuce McBride with his first two.
That ball's out of bounds with 17 on the shot clock. And Lindy Waters is going to inbounds it for the Cowboys. All the starters on the floor now for Mike Boynton's Cowboys. Here's McGriff having a good first half. Working on Matthews. Fade away. Got it to go. Double digits now for Cam McGriff with 11. And I love the under out of bounds set. They, they go into a tight flex. The ball ends up with McGriff, and he loves that mid post. McBride with the blow by. Went straight at an A. No foul called. Sheboy got the offensive rebound, and a foul is called. Well, you talked about the offensive rebounding prowess of Oscar Sheboy. He's already got a few tonight. He's going back to the line for the second time. I said at the top, he's one of the five best offensive rebounders in the country. That statistically, he and Austin Wiley are the only power five high major players who are in that top five. Sheboy, four offensive rebounds a game. And I remember a day when freshmen would come onto campus and they'd be frail, pale, and wouldn't know what the hell they were doing. <laughs> Will you look at his body? That's a freshman. Yeah, we, we looked at each other watching him warm up, and the one word that came to mind, freak. He is a, an athletic freak and a hard-working kid with a really high motor. McGriff off the window. Nice feed from Likely and Cam McGriff. Sensational in the first half with 13. And Oklahoma State doing a great job breaking the pressure to score. Tash Sherman, three-pointer top of the key, too strong. Another offensive rebound for Shibwe. And he's so good rebounding outside of his area because of the motor. He just never stops. Oscar Shibwe, one of eight major conference freshmen to lead his team in both points and rebounds. Shibwe coming in, averaging just over 11 points and nine rebounds a game. Far from a finished product on the offensive end, but you love what you see as a freshman. Well, absolutely. And you'd love to see him come back and have a sophomore year at West Virginia. I mean, that's the thing about this West Virginia team. They started two freshmen tonight, now that you're starting McBride. It's easy to forget that this West Virginia team is one of the youngest in all of college basketball. A lot of first-year players in Mountaineer Pass. uniforms. Harlow can't finish it off. Under five to go. Likely again downhill. And are they going to get Likely for the offensive foul? Yes, they are. It's been a frustrating night for Isaac Likely, who's 0 for the field so far and gets whistled for the foul again. And a drive in... Nice job coming over, and I like the call. I couldn't see his feet there from the angle. I assume Roger Ayers right on top of it. Nice job coming from the weak side. A likely goes to the bench now with his second foul. He had really had a coming out party of sorts last year in this building. Went off for 23 points and nine boards in their win last year against the Mountaineers. It's been a struggle tonight, but not for the team. They're up 10 on 17th ranked West Virginia. Four and a half to go in the first half. Off the hands of Haley, out of bounds. It'll be Oklahoma State basketball. And now seldom used walk-on D. Mitchell, number 31 in black on for Mike Boynton. He's got a 10-point lead, a little bit of a cushion. Get your point guard likely some rest. McGriff, aggressive, off the mark. Nice touch pass. Sherman got it. A two-pointer by Tash Sherman. 
And his first two of the game cuts the deficit to eight. Inside, Laurent couldn't handle it. But it's going to stay Oklahoma State basketball. Timeout here. We send things to the studio. John Brinkley for an update. All right. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings, visit Progressive.com. And in part by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. It's been all Oklahoma State in the first half on the road, and it continues out of the timeout with Lindy Waters' second bucket of the night. The lead is now double digits for an Oklahoma State team that has changed their offense and changed their fortunes in the Big 12, looking to make it four of their last five after starting an abysmal 0 for 8 in conference play. Sherman, got it for three. And everybody in West Virginia University Coliseum is breathing a sigh of relief after that make. Well, that's why they made the change in the lineup. He has been on fire from three, relatively speaking. The hope was that he would give them a threat from that three-point line. 40% from beyond the arc in his last eight games as Sherman got his first one tonight. Here's Laurent trying a three, in and out. Haley, off the window, another offensive rebound for Shibway, and he'll go to the line. And the biggest difference you can see from Oscar Shibway is if he does stick around next year, those will be and ones. Well, I hope he does, but you know, as the saying goes, board man gets paid, and he is an especially an offensive board man gets paid. He is unbelievable. For, for a player who's only been playing this game for a handful of years and is a freshman, he is outstanding. He never stops. He goes out of his area to get it. That's his first miss from the free throw line tonight. He's four for five now. Well, Saturday at noon on ESPN. Number one Baylor hosting number three Kansas at the Farrell Center. It's a sonic blockbuster and it could decide the Big 12 title. The big rematch between the Jayhawks and the Bears. The first one won by Baylor for the first time ever at Allen Fieldhouse. And they held the Jayhawks to their lowest point total in a home game in Big 12 play. I'm telling you right now, I could see Baylor losing two straight. I could see them losing tonight. And I do think they're going to lose on Saturday to Kansas. Baylor's coming up following us on ESPN2 against Oklahoma in Norman. Stay tuned for that one. Sherman off the catch. Back-to-back -back buckets from Taz Sherman. He has seven, and all of a sudden, West Virginia's got a little run going. They've cut the lead to five. Timeout on the floor called by Mike Boynton with 1.45 to go. We'll take a 30-second timeout. Be back after this. On the last couple of possessions, Chris Patola, it's been Taz Sherman seven and Oklahoma State nothing. They've brought the team back to within five with 145 to go. We'll see if he can loosen up this Oklahoma State defense. The zone has been tough to score against, but Sherman doing what he was brought in the lineup to do, and he's he's breathed a little life, you know, a little emotion going to break there from this West Virginia sideline. This crowd into it a little bit. Taz Sherman is a scorer. He's done it at the JUCO level where he was fourth in the nation in scoring at 26 a game last year. Here's the Zagwa, the three-point specialist. Errant pass picked off by Sherman. A deep three. And that was a heat check by Taz Sherman. Foul on Shibwe, and we're going the other way. Oscar Shibwe called for the first move, his second. That's the second foul on Shibwe, and with a minute 19 to go, 
That should be the last time we see him for the rest of the first half as Derek Culver checks back in. Now full court pressure from the Mountaineers. Not quite the press Virginia that we're used to of years past. And they back off and settle into their man-to-man -man defense. Try to get the ball into Ine, who's had a good first half as well. It's knocked out of bounds with one minute on the clock and 11 on the shot clock. Five to shoot. Anderson got the foul on the way up, and Avery Anderson will go to the line and shoot two. And Harwood's trying to be aggressive there. He had help behind him. Culver comes over to deny. Anderson knocks down the first. This is a team that shoots it very well from the free throw line, something that bodes well for them, but not so well for Bob Huggins. He's never seen an official that he liked. Anderson goes two for two. And the lead is up to seven now with under a minute to go. And a use it or lose it timeout now called by West Virginia. Well, it's been inside the three-point line for the Cowpokes, and Cam McGriff has benefited. And they've been deliberate to get him the basketball. He's become such a patient scorer, really lets the game come to him, doesn't force it, loves it on that mid-post. And he's really taken advantage. They've tried to run a few different guys at him. But he takes his time, and that's the one thing with this Oklahoma State offense here tonight and, and over this stretch of games here, Rich, is they've been very deliberate about getting the ball to where they want on the floor. And it's usually, you know, bent to that mid-post block area or bent off of Isaac Likely's penetration. You know, we gave Mike Boynton credit for kind of tweaking that offense part of the way through the season. He gave all the credit to his senior leaders like Cam McGriff, saying, you know what, Cam, when you're shooting threes, we're not winning ball games. We need you inside. And he has bought in completely. The whole team has. And it's really changed the face of the Cowboys season. He's the leader on their team. He's the connective tissue. He's the talker, the vocal leader. And that foul is going to go on Jonathan Laurent as Derek Culver had the ball in the low post. That's two fouls on Laurent. And now Deuce McBride's going to check back in for Bob Huggins. Sean McNeil to the bench with 30 to go in the first half. The line for West Virginia, Derek Culver. Derek Culver, the 6'10 sophomore out of Youngstown, Ohio, only shoots it at a 57% clip from the free throw stripe, and he missed the front end of the one and one. Shot clock is off. It'll be last shot time for the Cowpokes. They're going to go to halftime with a lead on the road in Morgantown. Now seven to go in the half. Inside, Boone. And a foul is going to be called on West Virginia. That's going to go on Chase Harlow. Like really good execution by Oklahoma State on the pick and roll. And then Harler tries to come over here. And that's a good call. His foot is right at the top of that restricted arc. And if you can read Bob Huggins', Huggins lips, he's saying, that's awful to Roger Ayers.
Well, now he's saying he had both feet down. I, I thought that right foot was touching that restricted arc. And so it becomes irrelevant if what Bob Huggins is saying, whether it's the case or not. Let's take another look at real speed. That's a bang-bang play for sure. Well, and Roger Ayers is the guy on the baseline, so you assume he saw the back of the foot there. And he pointed right to the restricted arc, so that was the call. Look at that stare from Huggy Bear. Well, he wants to win. I mean, how many times does he tell us today, Rich? We just want to win. So Caleb Boone goes one for two from the line. His first point of the night coming off a career-high 16 against Texas Tech in their 73-70 win, where Boone went 12 for 14 from the free throw strike. Now West Virginia's gonna have a chance to go the full 94 with four seconds left before halftime. Three tenths of a second tick off, and now Taz Sherman's gonna inbounds it to Deuce McBride. Tried to force it to McNeil out of bounds. It's going to stay West Virginia ball. And now just one second left before halftime. Third straight Oklahoma State deflection off of an inbounds pass before halftime. Here's Haley. Good if it goes. And it does go. <laughs> go figure. Jermaine Haley knocks down the triple. Took the first three-pointer from someone other than Tash Sherman. Took a while to get there. Had about seven deflections before he arrived at this point, but they get the shot I assume they wanted, falling out of bounds, and a bounce. And the musket fire from the West Virginia Mountaineer mascot didn't knock that one a little out of the rim. It was a little premature. So Haley with the three. Oklahoma State goes to the locker room up by 33-28. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try a big bacon classic today. And by one a day. Back in Morgantown, West Virginia for Super Tuesday, presented by Progressive. The Oklahoma State Cowboys with a five-point lead at halftime over the 17th-ranked West Virginia Mountaineers, 33-28. Rich Hollander, Chris Patola. How has Oklahoma State done it, Chris? Cameron Griff, you're an A. A combined 10 of 12. They have 21 of Oklahoma State's 33 points. Some tough shots in that half, but they got a lot of easy stuff, too. Some defensive lapses from West Virginia. Those two guys carrying the load. And then to end the half, you wonder if this builds some momentum. The offense struggling for West Virginia. Jermaine Haley ending the half with a flyer shot on that side out of bounds. We'll see if it can get this West Virginia team going. It's actually, they're fortunate, I think, Rich, to be down by five. West Virginia gets the ball, and it is Jermaine Haley. He, of that buzzer-beating three, just his fifth three of the year. May and McGriff combining for 10 for 12 from the field. McGriff also had a three-pointer. He leads all scores. And that's a good start from Derek Culver knocking down the field goal. Well, and Bob Huggins starting both bigs. Did not start the game with Culver and Shibwe. Decides to go with the Twin Towers to start the half. McBride and Sherman. Both first-time starters, both starting the second half as well. Shuffling the deck, the future Hall of Famer, Bob Huggins. Here's three on the shot clock, likely. McGriff, a deep three. I don't know if it's going to count. It's off the mark anyway, and Shibwe has another rebound. Oklahoma State led by double digits, but now their lead is just three. 
West Virginia looking to snap a three-game losing streak, and there's Deuce McBride to bring the Mountaineers to within one. It's a 14-3 West Virginia run to get back in this game. That's a seven-point swing, three to end the half, and then four to start the half. You get those quiet runs when you score like that to end the half. That one was blocked. And believe it or not, West Virginia with a chance to regain the lead. McBride for three. Not quite sure why he rushed it. Well, when you got those two guys underneath who are going to collect almost 40% of Ball all missed shots. Time McBride will inbounds to Sherman. McBride gets it back in the corner. West Virginia on top. West Virginia's up two, 18.06 to go, timeout on the floor. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try a big bacon classic today. Sunder out of bounds play, going to break. Good execution by West Virginia. Bad defense by Jonathan Laurent. The ball's going to come back to the inbounder right there, Miles McBride. Watch Laurent just run away from the play, not cognizant. And then the late help from the baseline, and Mike Boynton calls timeout and ripped into his team. I mean, just a lazy start to the half by his group. He is not happy. He still wears the scowl on his face. And the one-point West Virginia lead is their first since they were up 8-6 in the early going. They go inside to an A. Had a good first half. Off the mark, tough shot contested by the West Virginia defense. Mountaineers in the midst of a 14-3 run. Inside, Shibwe. Blocked from behind by McGriff. What a great defensive play. And Shibwe, for all his effort and energy, has yet to get in the scoring column with a field goal tonight. He's got four free throws, but that's it. This is team defense right here. This is unselfish defense. Looking to come over. Shibwe backs himself to two feet in the paint, and McGriff, the senior, comes over, makes a great defensive play. McGriff, Lindy Waters, Thomas Dezagwe, that's the senior class for Mike Boynton. They have never lost in this building, 3-0. And that's an unfortunate foul there. It'll stay Oklahoma State basketball. That's going to go on Osaboyan. And they're going right at Culver this time. Another tough shot, but the offensive rebound by McGriff. It's going to be a foul on the floor, and that's going to go on Osaboyan again. His fourth. Check that, that's only two fouls on Osaboyan. Three minutes gone by. And Oklahoma State still looking for their first points of the second half. Here they come in transition. Spin move likely. And McGriff, again, contested. Everything being contested by West Virginia coming out in the second half. on the shot clock. Culver in traffic. The tip. Count it. 
Give the bucket to Osaboyan. It's a 16 to three West Virginia run. A lot of the time that offensive board has been the best offense. Not a pretty possession there by West Virginia, but you come up with it because you're active on the offensive glass. And Laurent dribbles it off his foot and out of bounds. It'll be West Virginia basketball. When we come back, we talk Mount Rushmore for both clubs. Well, with it being President's Day recently, a lot of students having the day off, the West Virginia Twitter account decided to put it out there to the West Virginia fans. Who are the WVU Mount Rushmore all-time greats? Jerry West, Deshaun Butler, Hot Rod Hunley, and Javon Carter won the popular vote. Do you agree with that? 100%. What, how could you disagree with that list? I mean, certainly the logo, Hunley, both those guys hanging in this building. I, I understand some folks, a little Javon Carter, recency bias. He belongs on that list, no doubt. And then a guy is thinking about an Oklahoma State list. And this is my list. And, you know, I don't think there's any doubt about Bryant Reeves. And I don't think, you know, Bob Curlin, who most folks don't know, played in the 40s, but he's in both Hall of Fames the NBA and college basketball. Desmond Mason and John Lucas, maybe some debate. To me, Mason, four-year player, the most athletic player to ever come to Oklahoma State. And then John Lucas III. And Sherman knocks down another bucket. John Lucas III, Rich, is the, is the debate, I think. Because you got Tony Allen down there, honorable mention. Those two guys were teammates. They both shared Big 12 Player of the Year in 05. But to me, John Lucas III was the most important player on that Final Four team in 2004. One of the best run, two-season runs in Oklahoma State history. He's got to be on the Mount Rush. Even though he was only two years. I'm okay with Cal that. Pokes. So was Tony Allen. Tony That's Allen was not there at full four. Thomas DeZagla ends the 18-3 West Virginia run. I love a good Mount Rushmore debate. <laughs> Some people call it lowest common denominator conversation. I'm all on board. Listen, John Lucas has one of the most famous shots in Oklahoma State history. He hit the game winner against St. Louis to send them to the Final Four in 2004. Here's Haley underneath off the inbounds and gets the foul call. That's going to go on Caleb Boone. Frustration etched on the face of third year head coach Mike Boynton for Oklahoma State. The under out of bounds, it's really picked Oklahoma State apart in this half. Haley knocks down the first of two free throws. All over in ESPN at 9 Eastern, Coach Cal and the number 10 Wildcats squaring off against LSU at the Maravich Center in Baton Rouge. This promises to be a good one with the Wildcats having won six of their last eight. But when these two teams met a year ago, it went down to the wire and LSU won it 73-71. Here in Morgantown, four-point game. Oklahoma State led for much of the first half, but West Virginia has gone on an extended run to take a four-point lead. Sherman. Zog with a rebound. That one chased down. Here's Likely. He can't hit the one. Likely will reset for the Cowboys offense. Not his game. No. And it was guarded that way. <laughs> That's not what he does. So 
West Virginia in an extended rut in the first half, but they have come back in the second half. That one out of bounds, and it's going to stay West Virginia basketball. Ball whistled on Cameron McGriff, his first. Deep ball number three. That foul is going to go on Cam McGriff, his first. Sean Likely is going to go to the bench. Jermaine Haley with six points in the game, part of the big comeback for these Mountaineers. He hit that buzzer beater three that really swung the momentum in favor of West Virginia. Looking to snap a three game losing streak. Now five on the shot clock. One on the shot clock. Oh, Saboyan. And James Breeding's at the scorer's table to check if he did and beat indeed beat that shot clock as it ran down. Did he get it off? Good to me. Looks good to me. And it's interesting because in the first half, Oklahoma State had a couple of those flyer shots, well contested, well defended, end of shot clock type of shots. It has swung in his second half to West Virginia. They've had a couple of those. So James Breeding does indeed indicate the basket is good for Osaboyan. And the lead is now 41-35 for West Virginia. 12.33 to go. What's been the biggest difference in the second half for West Virginia? I think their shot quality has been better. You know, even against the zone, they've worked for better shots. I mean, they, the zone early in the first half had them stood up. And I thought they settled. Almost half their shots were threes in the early part of that first half. Anderson. Good recovery by McBride. And Culver takes it away. And their defense has been better. Yeah. You know, Oklahoma State shot 60% in that first half. Culver. Fouled by Waters and Derek Culver will go to the line. You know, part of the issue offensively for West Virginia over this stretch is they've had a hard time getting that ball inside. A good post feed there and Culver goes to work. Thanks, Brick. So uh, Illinois led by Brad Underwood, who of course is formerly the head man for Oklahoma State, but you see Maryland as a two seed. Of course, Joe Lenardi had West Virginia as a two seed. They dropped to a three seed, and they have dropped three straight, but now they're on an extended 21 to five run here. And what do you make of Joe Lenardi's bracketology right now with uh, the Big 12, with Baylor and Kansas as one seeds right now? I think the Big Ten is overrated, is what I think. I mean, I, you know, I think to, to say that there's 10, 11 teams from the Big Ten is ridiculous. And that there's a, there's a flaw in the system. I don't see one Big Ten team, even Maryland, I, thought, I don't see one Big Ten team that I think is the Final Four team. I see two teams in the Big 12 that could win a national championship. I think the ACC has two, and if Louisville gets their act together, I see three teams that could potentially do it. Blocked by Culver after he went one for two from the free throw line and Yorane coming up a little gimpy chasing that ball down. And I think Gonzaga is good. We, we lose, I think, an idea of how good they are when they go into conference play. I think San Diego State is good, but I would say the same thing about them. The two best teams in the country right now reside in the Big 12. Here's a turnover, likely at the other end. Ooh. Gets it to go. What a finish. And Isaac likely has his first field goal of the game. And it's a five point West Virginia lead. Osaboyan hangs, can't hit, but Gabe Osaboyan 
will go to the line. Uh, these turnovers for touchdowns are what have killed West Virginia, killed them against Baylor. I mean, just really good defense by Isaac Lightly, and then an even better finish over a 6-7 Jermaine Haley, and a little bit of like an English, like a little finger roll. Oklahoma State really needed that one. A little time. sconage with the T <laughs> in finger roll. Some jelly with your jam. Isaac Likely with just four tonight. They're going to need him to step up in the second half if they're going to come back and get back in this one. McBride turns him away. And here come the Mountaineers. Runner by McNeil. Here comes Likely again. He's got a full head of steam, gives it up to McGriff. And that foul is going to go on Osaboyan, his third. So a two possession ball game, 10.37 to go. Rich Hollenberg, Chris Patola, glad you're joining us on a Tuesday night. As West Virginia looks to snap their three-game losing streak and move to seven and six in the Big 12 schedule. Eleven nothing in second chance points. No surprise for one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the nation, let alone the Big 12. It's been their best offense. McGriff off the mark from three. Tough shot from Osaboyan. Here comes Likely in the open court. And he can't get it to go as he crosses the midline. Oklahoma State has only scored four points in the first half of the second half. This has not been a clinic at finishing at the basket. And that foul is going to go on Avery Anderson for the reach. And both teams have had a, a tough time finishing at the basket. I mean, you, you look at in their last three games, West Virginia in particular, they have attempted 41 more shots than their opponents. And a lot of that off of offensive rebounds. They have shot 41 more times than their opponents, but because they're shooting at 31%, they've lost all three of those games. I mean, it's, and a lot of those shots have been bunnies. Just stuff right around the basket where they haven't been able to finish. Haven't seen a lot of Oscar Shibwe in the second half. Still held without a field goal so far in this contest. McBride hits them both. He has eight. And the lead is eight for 17th ranked West Virginia. The largest lead of the night for the Mountaineers. They we haven't lost once on their home floor so far, Chris. We haven't said Cameron Griff's name a whole lot or URNA. Stars in the first half have been quiet in this second half. Culver clears for the Mountaineers. Time to shoot for West Virginia. And here come the Pokes. Looking to break a scoring drought. Laurent can't do it. Offensive rebound. And the bunny no good from Likely. He's really struggled at the rim tonight. And Avery Anderson's going to be whistled for the foul on the jump shooting Sean McNeil. And McNeil will go to the line. Ball is called on Avery Anderson, the second. I mean, this is eight. It's a big time sin. You, you cannot foul a three point shooter. And you get him right on the arm, and it just, it's not a smart play. It's a good contest. I, I, I like the, 
the effort, but you got to make a play where you're going by him, and you certainly don't want to hit him on the arm. And the officials do confirm that it is a three, and I don't even know why they really had to check it. He was clearly behind the three-point line, so Sean McNeil will step to the line of 79% free throw shooter and shoot three free throws. Neil knocks down the first. I agree with you, a good aggressive closeout, and yet you look at the numbers and Sean McNeil's one for his last 11 from three-point range. Two for two for McNeil, one more to go. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. A must-have for Big 12 Hoops fans, the exclusive home for number one Baylor taking on Kansas State next Tuesday at 8. Plus on March 4th, number three, Kansas, hosting TCU at Allen Fieldhouse. And on March 7th, Baylor is back with a big one against number 17, West Virginia, to close out the Big 12 regular season. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash Big 12. Three for three on the three free throw attempts for McNeil. Opens the lead up to 11 for West Virginia. A win and they complete the season sweep of Oklahoma State. And gives them their first win at home against the Cowboys in their last four tries. How many did Oklahoma State in the first matchup between these teams? How many did they get? 41 points. You think they'll get there tonight? <laughs> I would have bet good money that that was going to happen in the, at the end of the first half. Now, not so sure. Only four points so far in just about 12 minutes of play in the second half. It's been a struggle for an Oklahoma State offense so far. We'll be back in Morgantown after this. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. And in part by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 Basketball. In Morgantown, alongside Chris Patola, Rich Hollenberg, the rest of our ESPN crew. Thanks for joining us on Super Tuesday, presented by Progressive. It's been a tale of two halves, pardon the cliche. Oklahoma State dominated much of the first half, ended up up by five going to the break, but West Virginia has come out of that break on a 20 to four run, and they are now up by 11 with 8.13 to go. Here's Sheedway back on the floor after an extended break. Throws it up on the glass, gets his own miss. <laughs> and a jump ball, it's going to be possession Oklahoma State. You see, you see the two sides of Shibwe. The raw offensive game, as Mike Boynton is coatless now. You know, the tough, he doesn't really have a refined post game, but then he goes and gets his own board. I mean, that, then there's the offensive rebounding side to him. McGriff, left hand, yes. 15 for Cam McGriff. He leads the Cowboys. And he's going to have to get the ball more if they're going to get back in this game. He was dynamite in the first half. 13 points led all scores. McNeil left hand. He's a three-point shooter, but a nice drive by Sean McNeil. That one off the glass and good. Back-to-back -back buckets for the Cowboys. They haven't been able to say that in about 15 minutes of game time. Cam McGriff's season high is 20 points. He has 17 so far. Still seven minutes to go in this one. McBride. Oklahoma State. You talk about a West Virginia team that doesn't pass the ball very well. There were zero passes on that possession. Zero. Not a great shot, but again, when you've got 34 under there, he bails you out. You know, he'll bail you out of, of out of bad shots. So here's Oscar Shibwe at the line, shooting two, only four points tonight, all on free throws. 
but he does have 11 rebounds. Laurent to the bench with four fouls. Scoreless tonight. Coming off 16 and seven in their win against Texas Tech. And she weighs six for eight from the strike tonight. Tell you, if he figures it out a little bit on the offensive end, look out. Forget it. Forget it. McGriff. High off the glass, and Chibwe has a dozen rebounds. McGriff, he's hit a couple of those here, but you got to understand there's now two 6'10 dudes in the game. It's going to be a, a lot tougher to finish at the rim. Five to shoot. McBride got bodied up by Likely. Here's Shibwe. And a shot clock violation. Shot wouldn't have counted had it gone anyway. Now some token full court pressure by the Mountaineers. What would you like to see on the offensive end for the Cowboys now to get some buckets? A, a quality shot against this half court defense. And you know, again, they got such a steady diet. 21 of their 33 first half points from McGriff and Urine. The Zagwa no. And it's saved in bounds by Shibwe. And they were really deliberate about running their stuff, screening. Playing 25 seconds into the shot clock. The shot quality hasn't been nearly as good in this second half. And again, credit West Virginia's defense, but much better in the second half. Warren A hasn't gotten a touch in a while either. He's been on the bench a lot. Five to shoot. McBride does. Off to the right. And a foul on the floor on Oklahoma State. And once again, with those two bigs for Bob Huggins on the floor at the same time, it's a tall task to get a defensive rebound. They just mash you. I mean, again, they're the best rebounding team in the Big 12, one of the best in the country. URNA now with four fouls. It's not going to help the rebounding cause. And it's a West Virginia team that 15 offensive rebounds a game. And Culver with the left-handed shot is good. He has six to go along with nine rebounds. Well, it was a fairly miserable first half for West Virginia. They haven't done much better in the second half. The real tale is how Oklahoma State's offense has fared in the first to the second. First half, you can't complain at 62%, but in the second half, they barely had a chance at a clean look, and when they have, they haven't converted. And that's a prime example. You know, Mike Boynton can't go, to, go out there and make shots for these guys. And they've done a nice job because West Virginia has pressed them the whole game. And the best offense for Oklahoma State has been breaking the pressure to score. But Isaac Likely has not, ha has not had a good game tonight. And in this second half in particular, he's missed a couple bunny lay layups that were wide open. And in there, like, you've got to be able to finish that. Get yourself a three-point play. And this is a team that makes over 14 free throws a game and shoots it at a 73% clip. They've only made six free throws so far tonight. And there's another miss from Likely, one for two. It's an 11 point West Virginia lead coming up on five minutes to go. West Virginia dominating on the offensive glass. The pull up, McNeil. He's had a good night, yeah, he really has. Nine points for the sophomore out of Union, Kentucky. And it's been a little bit of everything. Perimeter shot, driving the ball to the basket. Good hands by McBride forcing the turnover. Just a bad turnover. It's inexcusable. It's a soft play by Lindy Waters. Haley, up 
the window. I mean, Haley has eight. And we have time stopped on the floor with 4.27 to go. And now the lead is ballooned to 15 for the Mountaineers. Here's his turnover again. Mike, Mike Boynton can't go out there and handle the ball for you. Lindy Waters comes off and Caleb Boone's wide open. And he's going to have a layup. Here's Waters. He's got a height advantage on McBride. Two feet in the paint. Lindy Waters short on the jump hook. And now time is squarely on the side of West Virginia. Looking to get back in the win column after three straight losses to Oklahoma, Kansas, and Baylor. Moved to seven and six in Big 12 play. Inside, Sheboy slipped, trying to receive the pass. It'll be Oklahoma State basketball with 3.44 to go. And the Mountaineers up by 15. lead for the Mountaineers. What was the turning point of this game for West Virginia? The shot at the end of the half by Jermaine Haley. They were down eight. He hits a flyer from the corner. The Mountaineers shotgun goes off early, but he buries that, cuts it to five. And then they came out to start the half and scored seven straight, and that was the game. That was the biggest shot of the game, that one to end the half. And they have been, it has been all West Virginia since. They've gotten tremendous rebounding, as usual, from their two bigs. Oscar Shibwe with 14 boards, Derek Culver with nine. And the two new starters have contributed as well. 17 combined from Taz Sherman and Miles McBride, starting their first game in a Mountaineers uniform tonight. Ten on the shot clock for the Cowboys. Boone, patient, off to the right. Out of bounds, and it'll stay Cowboys basketball, but there's just five on the shot clock. And pretty soon, Chris, as much as they want to avoid shooting threes, they're going to have no choice. Well, they are not a come-from-behind team. To your point, they just don't have the arsenal. Here's Waters on the catch. And another rebound, make it 15 now for Oscar Shibwe. His career high is 18 this season. Now the Mountaineers can play a little bit of keep away on the offensive end. Haley gives it to Shibwe, his first field goal of the night. Eight points to go along with those 15 boards from Shibwe. Can you imagine a guy with no buckets has 15 boards? Just That's amazing. Last tonight. No, but I mean, like, who motivates themselves like that? Maybe it's Coach Huggins. Maybe you get to the number of wins that he's going to have after tonight by motivating a guy who's got no buckets to go get 15 boards. There he is, sitting on 879. He is just two minutes and 31 seconds away from tying one of the all-time greats in Dean Smith. And he'll be two wins after that, tied with Roy Williams for fifth all-time. And at North Carolina's pace, he may be there pretty soon. And he belongs in the Hall of Fame. He belongs in the Hall of Fame. I don't understand what's taking so long. He is a Hall of Famer. And you look at that list right there, a lot of those guys still active. I mean, we are in a golden era right now in college basketball of coaching. I mean, Jim Beheim, Roy Williams, Coach K, that guy right there. The funny thing is, is every time I'm here doing a game, he has some of his buddies coming to visit him. All of them live in Florida. They're all retired. They got to come to Morgantown if they want to spend time with Huggy Bear. He's not hanging it up just yet. Five Sweet 16s, the 2010 Final Four. And just minutes away from win number 879 in his illustrious 38-year head coaching career. 
Waters, no good. McGriff, the rebound, knocked away by Haley. I don't want to belabor the point, but that's got to be scored. You had a layup. How that ball ends up getting blocked, I don't understand. Well, Sports Center's coming up tonight after Kentucky LSU on ESPN. Kenny Main, John Anderson. They'll have Rachel Nichols interview with Grizzlies rookie phenom John Moran. Plus, we're live in Vegas for Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury's arrival and Mel Kuyper Jr.'s Mock Draft 2.0. Sports Center after SEC Hoops on ESPN and the ESPN app. I usually like to ask you your pick in the UFC fights, but <laughs> there's no UFC this weekend, but there is that heavyweight battle for Wilder and Fury. Who do you like? Give me, give me Tyson Fury. Yeah. Talk about a chin. I think he comes back. By the way, a uh, little shout out to Dr. Dre. A little happy birthday shout out. Dr. Dre's really? birthday today. 55 years old, uh, Dr. Dre. 55 years young. Respect yourself, Chris Patola. The, the golden era of hip hop. Oh. Uh, I might go back a few years before that, but that was part of it. There's Zagwa with his second three. Thomas DeZagwa trying to give Oklahoma State a puncher's chance with a buck 33 to go, but his team is still down 13. Well, we are now more than two-thirds of the way through the Big 12 slate, and it's not going to be necessarily easy coasting for West Virginia down the stretch. Sure, they're facing TCU and Texas, who are at the bottom half of the league, but they're on the road for those two games. Then they're back here at home against Oklahoma. They'll be retiring Rod Thorne's number 44 that night. And then they're on the road at Iowa State before wrapping up the regular season against number one Baylor. So anytime you're playing on the road in the Big 12, it's a tough way to get a win, but there are still wins out there for this West Virginia team. Especially if you're West Virginia playing on the road yeah. in this conference. I'm telling you, that game tonight, following us, Oklahoma is going to beat Baylor. Ooh. And Kansas is going to beat Baylor on Saturday. Hot takes from Chris Spatola. Hey, listen. Scott Drew has been completely blunt when anybody asks him about being undefeated. He said, we're going to lose somewhere along the line. We just hope that it's sooner than later. They don't want to lose in March. And I look, I love Baylor. I've loved them for a while. Yeah. I was I was first on Baylor. But the psychology of sport is undefeated. So you start getting win streaks. You've got college game day there on Saturday, something that Baylor has never had in its recent history. All of that stuff in the minds of young people it starts to calcify, and you can drop games. And I'm telling you, on the road at Oklahoma, a team that can beat you, that psychology of sport is undefeated. I could see them losing tonight, and with the way that Kansas is playing, there is no question that they could lose on Saturday. By the way, you don't win 15 straight or, or share the, the, the win in the Big 12 without putting up a fight. And Kansas is going to put up a fight on Saturday. I'm telling you right now. McNeil is in double digits. He's got 11. His career high is 13. And this is an Oklahoma State club that has managed just 14 points in the second half. You jokingly said minutes ago, will they get to 41 like they scored in the final analysis the first time they played the Mountaineers? They're only six above that right now. Back to her cut, McBride. Nice pass and a great cut. I like McBride in the starting lineup. I do. Here's the walk on Mitchell, picked off by Osaboyan. Haley at the other end. And a foul is called, and Jermaine Haley will go to the line and shoot too. Well, if we run out of time here and there's only 28.7 left, this is going to go down as West Virginia's best defensive half in terms of score points allowed this entire season. The last time the next best was 18 points allowed in one half against the Pitt Panthers, and you were on that game. Look, Oklahoma State is offensively challenged, but 
West Virginia has been great defensively in the second half, and they're going to have to win games with their defense. Now, I think Bob Huggins trying to find ways where they can get more offense, but they're going to have to win games with their defense and their offensive rebounding is going to have to be the major component of what they do offensively. Haley one for two. But it's academic at this point. An 18-point West Virginia lead. So Oklahoma State's going to drop to 3-10 and 10 in conference play. West Virginia now above 500 at 7-6. and six, Their 19th win overall on the season. Next up for the Mountaineers. They're on the road against TCU. Oklahoma State. We'll take on Oklahoma in Bedlam coming up this weekend in Stillwater. Congratulations, Bob Huggins. Career win number 879 ties him for sixth all time with Hall of Famer Dean Smith. For everybody here at ESPN, including Chris Patola, I'm Rich Hollenberg. Our final once again, West Virginia 65, Oklahoma State 47. Now, John Brinkley in the studio.